Howdy everyone, Mr. Kazi here from beautiful Atascacita, Texas, and we want to get started on chemistry, matter, its composition, and changes. In this lesson, we'll talk about chemistry, science, scientific method, and the limitations of science, and much, much more. The types of chemistry, of course, are inorganic, organic, biochemistry, analytical chemistry, and physical chemistry. And of course, physical chemistry being the one that separates the men from the boys and the women from the girls. Chemistry is the scientific study of matter and its changes, which tells us then that science, that chemistry is a science, and that makes it systematic and it's the science of matter and its changes. So we're going to take a look at science and the process of science and then in coming um, videos we'll talk about matter and matter's changes. What is science? Science is a systematic observation of natural phenomena and natural phenomena is anything that's happening in nature or around you. That's all a phenomenon is. So look around you and observe then apply the rules to the system of science because science is a system and has a process and has rules and that process is the scientific method the scientific method is the process of science and it's based on observing hypothesizing testing analyzing and concluding and not everybody may do everything exactly this way, but these are the five main steps to any kind of study in science. You've got to start with some kind of observation, whether it be from actually watching something or noticing something or just research that's going to start you thinking about some kind of ideas. You're hypothesizing. Then you're going to test that hypothesis, analyze the data that you uh, gather, and then conclude. So, let's take a look at those. First, observing. Observing involves using your five senses. You need to use your sight, taste. Now, be careful about tasting anything in your laboratory or uh, places like that. But still, taste is one of our senses. You got your smell, you have touch, and of course you have hearing. And using these five senses together to observe and to watch the phenomena around you will begin to have you uh, think about ideas and hypothesize. And then hypothesizing is where you create your ideas. This is the big what if. What if I did this, what would happen? Or how did that happen? That's what hypothesizing is. And hypothesizing is just an idea. It has no proof. That's what the next part is. You take your hypothesis and you test it. And testing is the experimenting stage. Now to me, this is the fun stage. This is where you take and you, you design an experiment and you prove or you disprove your hypothesis. And then you collect data. And you take this data, you organize it, and you examine it through using tables uh, or charts and graphs and calculations. And then when you analyze your data, you come up with a conclusion. And the conclusion is your interpretation of the results or of your results. And remember, that's the same with just about anyone. When they come up with a conclusion, it's their interpretation. And it could be right or it could be wrong. You should uh, state the problem in your conclusion. You should tell whether it was solved or not solved. And you should have data to support your ideas. Because I'm going to tell you, nobody should accept your ideas without data support, without that empirical evidence, that evidence from the laboratory. Then we communicate our results. We share our results with others. We publish in journals. We go to conferences and give talks. And we go to the internet. And every good scientist nowadays, I would say, should have a blog or some kind of website where they can put out their information as well as in the journals and conferences. But that brings us to the idea of science here now. Science has limitations because science should be observable, measurable, and repeatable. And if it's not observable, measurable, and repeatable, it's not good science. What it really is is it's philosophy 
or it's the philosophy of science, but it's not science in the way that Newton or Boyle or uh, Einstein or even Richard Feynman, who's a great scientist of the 20th century, they knew that science had limitations. And if it didn't agree with experimentation, it was wrong. You have to have repeatable data. With that, then that means science cannot deal with morality, truth. It cannot deal with absolutes or universals. You can't say all or every. It just doesn't work in science. That's what you use in philosophy. Leave that to the uh, philosophers or the professors of religion or the ministers, not scientists. I like to think of science as the door to technology. And what science really is, is just workable. I always tell my students, that's probably my favorite wor word about science. I don't care if it's true uh, or if it's some kind of truth. What I need to know is that when I take this to the laboratory, when I take it to uh, do something, in the world of technology, is it workable? And if it's workable, then it's good science. And you know later, someone may come along with better data and show that it's not as workable as I thought. Then we change our ideas and we improve our uh, statements or our, our theories. We can improve our theories that way by being open to the idea that there's going to be new data. So thinking it through, you should be able to answer the question, what is chemistry? You should be able to answer what is science. You should be able to explain and describe scientific method and the process of scientific method. Look forward to one of my future videos here where we're going to actually talk about the experimental process, which is just an extrapolation on the test, the experiment. And remember, science is simply the observation and description of natural phenomena, and anything more than this is philosophy. If you have any questions, Send an email to Mr. Kazi at mrkazi.com. Be sure to check out Mr. Kazi's world, PowerPoints and videos and much more uh, available to you. And join my YouTube channel. The studies have shown that it's increasing. All right, everybody. Happy on.